What is up, everybody? This is Recap Rewind. I'm Jay Lag. And I'm NB. And this episode is recapping and reviewing Riverdale Season 4, Episode 12. And it's called Chapter 69, Men of Honor. And I just have to say a quick shout out to at Postmaster Radio for filling in for me last week. He did a great job. And it was a really good episode. And I'm kind of like, we talked about it offline, but... It was a great episode. Yeah. Um, but still, guys, don't forget to crown for the ending because we are going to go through our recap roundups. We have a lot of your recap roundups um, from our listeners on Twitter. Um, our MVPs are yep. LVP, so be sure to stick around to the end of the podcast for that. And we also have our contest going on right now for a chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card and a pop socket. To enter, all you need to do is rate and comment on our iTunes page, and you'll be entered in the draw. We are extending this contest to the end of Riverdale Season 4, so you still have lots of time to enter. And as always, to our continuing listeners and our brand new ones, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the episode, Oh y'all. my god, I'm so excited to hear what you have to say. <laughs> this episode was wild. Guys, this <laughs> episode should have been called, this episode should have been called, wait, what? Because yeah. the amount of times <laughs> I said, wait, what? In this episode, (laughs) like, I, this was the most randomest episode I think I've, I've, Riverdale has ever, like, written. And there were, (laughs) there were still some good moments, I think, within the episode, but, like, overall, guys, I was confused, and then, like, just reading everyone's, like, tweets on Twitter after, I'm like, okay, like, everyone is confused, like me, like, they get it, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so outside of feeling confused, did you like the episode? Did you feel like it was necessary? Did you feel no. like it was a, like a major and, filler? <laughs> no, and I definitely think there were some things that were necessary, like the Katie Keene thing. I think they had to like insert that at some point in Riverdale. Well, it's a hashtag plug, right? Yeah, so. they had to do that, and I get that. But honestly, like everything else, like from Tony's random ass mission with Nikki, from yeah. like um, Frank being like a mercenary. To yeah. like Archie getting the <laughs> shit beat out of him in the school bathroom. Pure, like he, he got his, the living shit. Like beat out, worse beat than out the him. bear, guys. Like worse than the yeah. bear. <laughs> it, I was just like, "What the uh, fuck is yeah. going Some on cr- this week?" Like it's it is insane when you th- uh, the most normal storyline is a detective daughter. Um, moth- mother combo is trying to find out if there's yeah, a serial totally, killer in a totally. private school. Okay, <laughs> that's the most normal one. That's the most. That one, normal I was like, one. "Oh, I'm down for this. <laughs> I'll take this." Like, fuck! Even the Lodge family had to give us a fucking turn. Hiram's sick now. Like, what the fuck is happening to these storylines? Honestly, but like, yeah, we'll talk I don't about know. all of them. Ugh, we'll talk about that, guys. Crazy. Just stick around. Yeah. So, um, we'll start with uh, the challenging of the duel. And this is, like, run by Mr. DuPont somehow. Like, he is, like, the leader of the dual society. Um, so can I ask and, you real quick? Can I ask yes. you, what? why are they doing this duel? Like, I thought... But why? Though? I thought <laughs> Jughead was already going to write the book. So, like, what is what is this battle about? This is more just to, like, a fight. It's, like, For whoever what? wins gets... I think it's just, you know, after the end of last episode, obviously Jughead was like, fuck you... Brett, like, screw you and your attitude toward my girlfriend. Let's fight. Like, that was his whole situation. He wanted to find a way to get Brett, like, take Brett down, essentially, in, like, the way that he could. Like, using a duel, which is a part of, like, the the quill and skull, whatever, whatever. Right? I'm just kind of over that. I'm just over the whole duel, duo, intense ma- <laughs> I, I'm over that. You know what I mean? Like, I want them now yeah, to... Get to the bottom of this whole skull and Quinn Quill thing. Right. Like, I'm done. You know? And by the end of the episode, like, he's done. Like, Jughead's done, too. But he's like, yeah, I don't need to fight it. you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm over this. Right. Which I, like, to your point, yes, maybe this needed to happen for it to just end the way it ended. But um, I do feel like this whole thing with him being still in the Quill and Skull and him being a part of the, you know, the ba- this crew of people... Um, that needed to end because yeah. he needed to come back to Riverdale. Yeah, he needed yeah. to come back to Betty. Um, and he was, he. this was like his last way of being like, this is what I'm going to do, like based on my current like group of people. And then let me get the fuck out of here. So wait, so, it, does that mean that he left the school? I don't know. Uh, we can talk. Well, let's talk about it at the end. Okay. 
Um, so yes, they they're about to do this brawl, um, and it's three main things that they decide on: a brawl, like a fist fight, a fencing match, and a chess match to like offset everything. And he gets Donna as his advisor. Like you have to have like a second person to kind of help you out, and that's his person. I, already, I was like, the this, brawl I still don't trust this bitch. So, like, come on, yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't trust her. I don't trust her eyebrows. And secondly, <laughs> the brawl was so extra. Like, how is their teachers like watching two students like fucking fight with their bare yeah. fists? Like the fencing thing, I was but, fine uh, with. The chess, I was fine with. But like. A physical pure brawl was a little like okay, guys. You guys couldn't think of like one more like matchup. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, archery I think they had something. to show. They did have to show that like the fencing was more for like Brett's advantage because true, like, he would have known how to do that. Yeah, that's true. And then the fight was more for Jughead because Jughead knows how to kick ass. So like it was trying to even the playing field, and then the chess master is just like because they're both smart, like whatever. Um. Anyway, so that's kind of like what Jughead's dealing with this episode. Uh, we cut to Archie and Frank at the construction zone. They're in the trailer, and Ted just like walks in. This guy just walks in, and Frank's like, "Uh, some guy named Greg is dead now." Like he doesn't even introduce himself. He just like looks at Frank, and Frank's like, "Ted," and he's like, "This guy's dead now." Bye. Um, and that's how he's introduced. Turns out that he like served time with. Uh, Frank and the army and then he gets invited by Archie to go for dinner mm -hmm. so then it cuts to the lodge residents and uh, oh she's alive for, mommy mommy mom. are you there mom? mommy oh my are god you you're actually uh -oh. there you're on the payroll oh wow. good job girl you're back so yes Hermione the entire family is back and uh, Veronica is like by the way I'm gonna go and have a, I guess it's an interview at one of the schools. Yeah. And she also wants to go shopping. And then she's like, I'm going to meet up with Katie Keene. It's on on Thursdays at 8 p.m. And like there is, uh, she just, she's just getting ready. And uh, I was going to say Mark and Swales, but <laughs> Hiram, Lodge, Hiram and Hermione are like, wow, a good timing. I'm actually going to be going down there for some business so we can just make it like a family trip. And Veronica's so, like, ugh. Full disclosure, I was kind of waiting for them to, like, cut to New York the entire time. I was, like, down for that. I would have been, like, sick. Right. Like, a, a whole... And I still think they should have done this just because everything else in this episode felt very random and very filler. I think they yeah. could have done a full episode with just, like, a New York trip. You know? And yeah, really, like, sure. really, like, embracing the Lodge family, coming together again, and, like, spending quality time together... Um, and they all are from New York. It's not just you, Veronica. You don't own New York City. Right. You're like 15 years old. Like, calm the fuck down. Um, I think I wanted the episode to go there, you know, just to yeah. kind of get away from Riverdale for a little bit. That would have been cool, but that didn't happen. Um, then again, it's like it's really difficult, I think, with those kinds of situations. For one, the considering Riverdale is like a fake place. New York's a real place. Like, what are they going to be like? Let's go see like. Kelly Ripa. <laughs> oh, no, but like they like, could have like walked down a street, like a fake street or like a park, like to replicate yeah. like some, like it would have been a cute like family like little cut to, right. you know? Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure even probably Marcus Willis was probably like sick. I can shoot something in New in York. Yeah, and the thing is that yeah. I'm and I'm only saying that because the episode just felt like a filler. Like, like if it yeah. was other things actually happening that made effing sense. Um, I would have been like, yeah, that makes sense. But like nothing really else was like crucial. So I would have been down yeah. for that, but whatever. But they never, they've never really like just focused no, on one they haven't. character but that, and their that, story. So. I think I would have been down for that. Anyways. Yeah, I totally would have been down for yeah. that. Anyway, so uh, they decide that they're going to do a New York trip. She's like, uh, but just remember that New York is my town, not yours. And I'm like, okay, you're literally talking like, to Mark and Like it can't be your town. <laughs> like your parents like gave birth to you there. Like they were there before you. <laughs> Like, uh, sit down, girl. <laughs> um, so then it cuts to Tony and Fangs, and she like sees him by the locker, like counting all his money or something. Like, yeah, he's just like, She's like why do you have money? How are you rich? <laughs> Tell me everything. <laughs> How are you rich? <laughs> and then he doesn't really say it there, but he's like, oh, like I have this like new gig, and Tony's like, oh, sick. Can I get in on this? And I'm like. Like, How since when was Tony, I, like, thirsty for money? I was like, uh... And what is... Why what is do you need like, so much money? You live with your girlfriend in her mansion. Like, 
I cannot believe that I could not talk to you about this fucking storyline, this tickle porn storyline. Yeah. <laughs> like last week, I so wanted guys, to talk to you about okay, it. So, guys, okay, can badly. we? So, can we just quickly like go on a rant, like a quick, quick rant? Yeah. You know, sure. guys, we've always been like Kevin's ch- biggest cheerleader. I I just think that uh, after watching last week's episode and seeing Kevin once again um, having a storyline, but again, his storyline yeah. is attached to like this sexual like i need a you know guy's attention or what like why why can't it just be like another story for kevin i don't understand why it always has to do with like something romantic or sexual i just feel like we're like why aren't we not past this point of time with him like can he not be like a full-fledged character who doesn't have to just have a relationship yeah why can't he like Take up a pottery, like taking up or, a like, fucking pottery show class. Him, show him, show him, like trying to decide on the on the drama of this, like the um the theater show this year. Like show him, like yeah. struggling with that. Show him, like you know something like, other than something that. Like up. come on, yeah. like he's not just that character. And it was so yeah. funny because I showed, um, I saw a tweet last night quickly, and it was like there was a part in the episode where when Kevin saves Archie in a way from the bathroom, um, yeah. And Kevin's line is like, the school is crazy or whatever. Apparently, right. like they didn't even write that line for him in the script. He had to, on exist. the day of the shoot, <laughs> say like, he he said to them, like, I should say something, guys. Like, not just <laughs> grab my friend. Like, I should vocally like say something. And they gave him that line. Yeah. Like, I don't know. If I was KC caught, like, I'd be like, bro, what the fuck is my character? After, yeah. like, three or four four seasons, like, this is all I get. And I know we keep saying this. I know we keep circling around to this. Yeah. But, but I was really annoyed after last week's episode, and I couldn't, like, we couldn't talk about it. So this is just me. You know, and, and it's... And it- and it is really, really tough. Like, it's tough to watch because, like, I think as people, just general people, like normal whatever people, are people are watching the show and they're like, this character must be insane. Like, as someone is a, who's a part of the gay, like, the LGBT community, like, I cannot stand for this fucking storyline. And there's a lot of people who are our followers online who say the exact same thing. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of people who know, yeah. like, his character really well from the comics and how he's been so divergent from that and that there's so much material that they could be working with and they don't put anything anything into his storyline that has to do with any of this. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just don't understand why they went on such a hard left with his, his character and they are still not back with him yet. I just, I'm a little bummed about it. I'm pretty bummed. They don't get it, yeah. And I'm really disappointed. Know. Like, fucking R.E.S., like, what and is especially- happening? Yeah, and especially after this week's episode, like, you know, we'll get into it later on in the episode, but like him, Tony, and Fangs coming together to do this yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> really like weird kind of revenge plot that, that honestly, guys, like left a re- really weird taste in my mouth. Like, I didn't, it was funny to see for a minute, but then I was like, what are we trying to tell people yeah. though with this? Like, I don't know. It, anyway, yeah, we'll talk about it after. But uh, moving back to the whole story, yeah. the main story. Sorry, guys. Um, Al- <laughs> yeah, it's tangent. So Alice and Betty are at the school office, and it turns out that not only did she get suspended, she also got stripped <laughs> of her newspaper like role, and yeah. she's not allowed to go to prom. I was like, first of all, doesn't this scene feel like it should have been in last episode? It's like um, we got, 100%. We I forgot got- what even happened. <laughs> I forgot why she yeah. was in trouble. Um, yeah, and I well, do think it was that whole like thing. Yeah, the the paper, or whatever the evidence. But I do think her mentioning prom was like on purpose for like a later storyline because I'm like it's right. so far away. Like, why are you punishing the girl like four months ahead of time? Yeah, they're like, don't forget, she's not gonna go to prom. <laughs> like in April, <laughs> bitch, you now. ain't invited to prom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna have to like fucking break in or some shit. Yeah. Anyway, um, and I don't believe that they wouldn't let Betty go to her last high school. Yeah, that's like, bullshit. That no, no, sense. no. Um. Anyways, so then it cuts to uh, she. Oh, actually, so they're walking by. They're like leaving the school, and she walks past like the board where she has like her crazy board where she's like connecting all the dots and whatever. And Alice, since Alice is there, she's like. Ooh, what is this, daughter? And she just kind of explains it. She's like, maybe you can help me with this situation. I'm trying to take down fucking <laughs> Brett. <laughs> She's like, okay, cool. Help me, so mommy. So then it comes to um, <laughs> Ted, Frank, and Archie, and they're having dinner. 
And right before dinner finishes, Archie's like, why don't you just stay here? We don't have, we have so much space. My mom's not even here. So clearly we're going to have a crazy storyline this season, <laughs> this episode. Yeah. Like when Mary's not in town, Archie Yo, gets his ass fucking <laughs> handed to him. <laughs> like, fuck. Uh, so, uh, Ali- so then it cuts to Alice and Betty and they're like on the case. I was living for this moment. I love this I'm moment. Like, yeah, never I did. Seen- them yeah. both like on the same side, like doing something. Yeah. So I was really excited about that. And uh, they're trying to like, you know, lay it all out. And Betty's explaining it to Alice. And she's like, I don't really trust this Donna chick. And Betty, uh, Alice is like, well, that's a good place to start. Let's find out if, um, you know, there's a Mrs. Chipping and yeah. see if her story actually she's, holds she's, up. She's accused Mr. Chipping of having an affair with her and like assaulting her or whatever. Right. That was her accusation. Yes. So, uh, anyway, so then it cuts to the Andrews res and Frank and Ted are talking like this is the next morning and they're just like talking. Archie's talking and then he's like, okay guys, we're going to go to school now. And so then he leaves and then right before like everything ends, Frank gets a phone call and right in that moment he gets a phone call and it's like somebody's dead on the other line and Frank's like, who's dead? That's not possible. And then right in that moment, Ted comes in and tries to like beat his ass and like fucking kill him. Uh, um, so there's a struggle, there's fighting in the kitchen and then right before like he's about to get ki- or like Fred's a- Frank's about to get like choked to death. Um, Archie comes back in and like hits him with something and then Ted like runs away. So <laughs> that happened. Yeah. Um, so that there's that storyline, which I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> Why can't Archie just have like a normal, normal episode? He throws a house party. His mom's not in town. You know, his uncle has like a couple of beers <laughs> and that's it. Like, why did we need this epic <laughs> fucking crazy fight oh trip like God. there was like three different fight sequences in this episode because of yeah. uncle frank like it was so excessive and so i didn't need it uh and yeah. i don't really know where it got us in the end <laughs> like it doesn't really no. need anything <laughs> it really like you know when we were talking about how like how is frank gonna leave the show because he can't be a permanent character I never thought in a million yeah. fucking years they were going to be like, well, he was a mercenary murderer and now he needs to run away because the feds are after him. <laughs> like, yeah. what? Like, are you even if he, like, taught Archie, about? like, how to fight. Like, even if he yeah. was like, Archie, always swing with your left hand first and then your right. I yes. would him like, sick. Like, he taught him something. He literally, guys, did not teach him anything. He just left. <laughs> that was yeah. it. Like, he almost got his And why couldn't killed. you make. So and why couldn't what you make like Frank point? like a like a cool mercenary, someone who's like a sick assassin that like like throws knives and is like really cool? Instead, he's just like a dumb, yeah, yeah. like sad, like washed loser. up mercenary. Like, he, yeah, like why couldn't they make him cool it if they're gonna give him so that random storyline? guys? Again, so again, dumb. I was like, wait, what? Like, why yeah. are we watching this? So, yeah. So, this is when he explains. He's like, well, the storyline that I got for this character is we were, uh, I'm a hired mercenary <laughs> after the army. And he, like, went and killed other people. And now that he's, like, left that mercenary group, there are people who are coming after him to kill him. So, like, basically assassins are trying to kill him. I'm like, this is basically born identity, but, like, worse. Yeah. And, um... Archie's just, like, getting in on it. He's like, don't worry, Uncle Frank. Like, we're going to get some backup. Don't worry about it, okay? So then it cuts to another scene later, but we'll talk about the Cooper res again. And um, Betty and Alice are now talking to Mrs. Chipping. And uh, Mrs. Chipping, right off the top, she's like, well, I don't believe that there was an affair. Yeah. My man was, like, totally loyal. Like, I don't think that there was anything shady happening. Um and then they're like, well, why did you think that he killed himself? And she's like, I feel like it has something to do with the Baxter brothers. He was freaking out right before he died. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And even Alice and Betty were like, yeah, why would he even kill himself if he was so close to being finished with the whole series? If it was stressing him out so much. And Mrs. Chipping's like, well, I don't know. Just like take a look at this box of stuff that he left behind. Maybe there's something that you can figure out. And Betty goes through all of the stuff and then she sees these army pamphlets and then she like uses her like beautiful mind brain to like put it all together (laughs) yeah 
Um, I don't know how she figured that out. I have no. I was, no, like, I was like, "What are you thinking, girl? What is behind those eyes? What are you? Tell me." <laughs> it's fucking Betty's so smart. Yeah. So then it cuts to FP and uh, Archie and Frank, and uh, FP's like, "Don't worry, bro. I got you, man." Um, and it is funny because they don't talk as if they have any history with each yeah. other. Yeah, and like I was, I was waiting business. for that. I was waiting for FP to be like. Yeah, but did they have that last week, that conversation? No. They didn't? Nothing. Whoa, that's weird. They've had no they've had no conversations. And this is what I was saying. I like, like made it up when, in my head just to make it make sense. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, I gave Frank a, a backstory of, <laughs> in my own head. Yeah. I, I feel like I a couple episodes back there was an opportunity where F- FP could have um, you know, this is when I think Archie goes to like jail for like punching Brett in the face. And I was like, FP could have been there to have a conversation with Frank. Instead, Frank is the one that bails him out. Right. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. Why couldn't they just introduce FP? They must have history. Yeah. Clearly, they don't. They don't so, care to say that. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, anyway, it's so, so weird. Yeah, it just it makes it more and more apparent that he's not supposed to be there. What you know I did, what I, mean? what I like, did appreciate though, because I was asking the question, I was like, why would you go to like the town's police officer that's like half a gang leader? Like, go to the FBI, yeah. like go to the feds, and they do answer that question because they're like, because Frank's like, like later, I can't yeah. go because like I'm a murderer too. Essentially, I'm also in so trouble. <laughs> I'm glad that they yeah. kind of like at least tied up that end because I was like, guys, seriously, like FP is gonna solve your problems? Like he can barely solve like the town's <laughs> problems, like. Let alone, like, this guy. <laughs> you can't even fix phallus at this point. Like, what the fuck? Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they're like, let's just um, go to the El Royale. We'll lead him there, and then we'll figure this out. And Frank's like, cool, cool, cool. Um, then it cuts to Stonewall, and they do the fencing fight first. And obviously, Brett wins. That's, like, the end of the scene. Like, obviously, Jughead wasn't going to win that one. Yeah. Then it cuts to uh, New York. And Katie Keene is introduced. So first of all, I don't know if anybody's a Miss Maisel fan, but oh, yeah. is that the same store? Is that B. Altman? I think it's supposed to be that vibe, but I think it was supposed to be Macy's because I don't think B. Altman is around. It's It hasn't been around for like a while. But because right. later on in the episode, like Veronica does say, like, I'm going to use my mom's Lacey's card. So I, I feel oh. like maybe they're at Macy's. <laughs> oh Cause Macy's like does have that little like it's, but you're right it did like I thought of Mrs. Maisel when I first saw it and I think that was the look that yeah. they were going for. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same set, so it must be totally. maybe Macy's in New York looks like that. Like maybe there's a Macy's that's like I think it took does. Over yeah, yeah, yeah. Main, I think it does main, main area. Cause the one Anyways, in Chicago, I remember the one in Chicago looked like that too. I feel like all the original similar. like Macy's maybe look look so look similar. Have that but what did look. you think yeah. of of Katie Keene? I thought it was so cute. Um, it is yeah. funny because when I see Lucy Hale beside Veronica, or I guess I should say Camila Mendez, you do see so many stark similarities, like the dark hair, the short bob. Um, yeah. Outside of that, I mean, like, there's n- nothing else. But <laughs> I, I feel like <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> I was like, there's that, that, the end. <laughs> I feel like just visual- <laughs> visually seeing them both beside each other, I was like, I don't know. I feel like as an a viewer, I would be confused. Like, what do you if mean? It was just like two brunettes in, I don't know. Like, how often do you see like two brunettes in one scene with the same haircut, same everything? You know what I mean? Yeah, but the, they're not in the same show. I don't know. So Is that weird? Matter. Just, like, <laughs> she's just popping in. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think she was cute. Um, did it intrigue me to watch the show? <sighs> not really. Um, yeah. And it was hard to buy the fact that they were like life, like they were they were like friends before that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was like, meh, whatever. Yeah, I, I am I, curious I love to, to know see, what you guys. Yeah. I am curious to see how they're gonna connect Josie because you know when Veronica's meeting her in this episode, like Josie is still somewhere in the universe right. because this is still <laughs> in Riverdale timelines. This isn't like Katie yes. Keene four years later timeline. So that's going to be right. interesting to see too. And I wonder if in Katie Keene, um, if they're going to mention like anything about her mom, because in this scene, she talks yeah. about her mom being sick. So I wonder if like right. in the actual show, like she'll be like, yeah, my mom like died or whatever. It's been like four years or something, you know? Yeah. 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 To connect those. Dots. I don't know. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, you're right. There must be some sort of timeline, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but 
in this scene specifically, they are just trying on clothes. It's like this cute little montage. And they're like, let's go to a bar. And then they like. Not yeah. any bar, a drag bar. Yes. they. But I then did, I know. I, I we didn't, didn't even get to see any drag queens. That's what I mean. Like, like what was I the was point so of saying drag bar? excited and I was like, oh, my God, like they're going to go there. Cool. And then I was like, wait, the episode, like, the episode <laughs> ended and I was like, wait, where were the drag queens? Like, I didn't even get to see any. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> They're like, stay tuned on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah. You'll see drag yeah. shows on Katie Keene. Um, yeah, so whatever. They they head to this drag bar. Um, and then it cuts to Ted and Frank, and they meet at the El Royale. Um, like, Ted shows up, and he's like, okay, well, it's just going to be like one-on-one. We're going to fight. And then, of course, that's when everybody comes in, and uh, they arrest him. And Ted is like, you broke all the rules. You're all fair game now. And Frank is like, well, <clears throat> you're getting locked up. So it doesn't matter. So FP puts him in jail. And then Ted's like, Rrr. and then that's it. Yeah, so stupid. Then it, <laughs> then it cuts to the Maple Club. And everything's like bumping up, up in there. Like it's like a brand new club, new location. And Tony's kind of like the madame of yeah. the place. Like she's a hostess. Yeah. And she sees Nick St. Clair walk in. And she's like, hey, buddy, what you doing over here? You want some more money? Another and, moment uh, where I was like, wait, what? Why yeah. is Nick St. Clair here? And then on top of that, when she asks him, like, oh, like, whatever, like, what do you want to do here? He's like, me and my friends are, like, uh, celebrating getting into Harvard. So we figured yeah. we'd come <laughs> over here all the way to Riverdale, a fucking small ass town <laughs> to party. Like, why? How does that make sense, guys? How does that make sense? And like, uh, why wouldn't you go man. to the speakeasy? Like, why are you going? Like, it makes zero sense. It yeah. should have just been like a random. I don't know. I, I don't even know, guys. I can't. I mean, I guess. I th- and that's the thing. I guess like the Maple Club is getting a reputation now. But then we also have to remember that the St. Clairs know the lodges. So does that mean that Hiram would take down the Maple Club? Do we even care about the storyline anymore? Or am I the only one that's invested? No. In- <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm the only one that cares about fucking consistencies in these goddamn storylines. So <clears throat> whatever. Yeah. Uh he's talking to Tony. Tony doesn't know who he is. And Cheryl notices him from the back corner as she's coming out. And she's like, oh fuck, it's him. And then she has like a montage flashback and then she like runs away. And so that's how that scene ends. And then it cuts to Moose. So, like, like you were saying, literally every fucking random storyline came out in this one episode. They're like, let's bring Nick St. Clair back. Let's bring Moose back. Let's yeah. get, like, yeah. why was all of this happening in one yeah. episode? Like, I they're have like, no just idea. like, let's make this all of us. Like, all of these storylines are insane. So, Moose comes back and he's talking to Alice and Betty at Pops. And he basically says how um, Brett was doing something and it turns out that Mr. Chipping was the one who recruited him in the first place. Like he's the one that wanted him to come to um, Stonewall. Yeah. And then after everything went down with him being like uh, found out about like his dad being the fake Gargoyle King, that's when uh, things started getting bad. And then Mr. Chipping wanted him to get out. And he was the one that actually gave Moose the idea to go to the army. So that's where like the army pamphlets come from. I was like, okay. So then Moose drops this whole storyline about the fact that Brett has a video of him having sex because they're roommates and he was holding it over his head this entire time and being like, oh, if you like stay here or I don't know if I guess he was like making him do stuff. He was blackmailing Blackmailing. him with this sex tape. And so that's when Betty's like, oh, okay. So like he's actually a full out criminal. Um, and then she's like, I got to go find the sex tape. So then it cuts to Betty and Alice in Jughead and, and Brett's room. And everybody's in class. <clears throat> or she's assuming that everybody's in class. And uh, they start to, like, snoop around and look for this tape. So then, of course, Brett comes in right away. And he's like, what are you guys doing here? And this is a question that I have for you and the audience and everybody listening. Why do they always tell the entire answer in one second like he's like what are you doing here she couldn't come up with any other yeah. lie she's like i'm looking for your sex tapes the one that you <laughs> took of me and of moose and of jughead i'm like what uh, why like, are you telling see, the whole 
secret. You forgot your necklace in the room. Yeah. And your mom like, had to help you find it. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> that's all you need to say. Like, why give that whole situation? Like, he can fucking literally burn all the evidence yeah, in five seconds. Yeah. It just doesn't make any, like, unless she's going to trail him and, like, follow him, it doesn't make any sense why she would have given that information away. So, anyway, he low-key, like, threatens her. He's like, well, if I did have those tapes and, like, you should be so lucky that I'm a good person and I wouldn't be releasing a tape like that of you guys having sex. And then he closes the door, but then he does, like, panic for a second because I'm like, yeah, of course, because now you fucking know her own entire answer, like, what she's going to do. Yeah. Anyway, it was stupid. Then it cuts to Veronica and Katie Keen. <laughs> and uh, Katie Keen, there's only one. Um, and v- Veronica says that she's excited to go to New York for school because it sounds like she like got into the school or is going to get into the school. And um, I am asking the question, are because she starts talking about Archie and she's like, you know, Archie's place is in Riverdale. He's never going to like really like that's kind of where he's going to be. And then Katie Keene even mentions long distance. Um, Does this mean yeah. that Archie and Veronica are like going to be donezo? Do you think that that's going to be the situation I by the end of the so. episode? Or a season? I think I guess? so. And I think by the I think by the end of the episode, when you hear Archie say what he says about like, you know, Fred and, and, and then his kind of life. Um, after high school, I think it makes sense for Archie to stay there. Having said that, I think it was pretty um, premature yeah. for her to assume that he was going to stay there. And that, to me, is more of like a warning sign that like she doesn't expect anything from him. She expects him to stay there. She expects him to be like the town boy and that she's going to move uh, away and she's going to start this new life. She still said she's going right. to make it work with him. That's fine. But like the fact that she's already assuming that like he's gonna just stay behind like what if he wants to come with you like what if he says like i'll come for a little bit and see how my like you know the fact that she was already yeah. assuming that to me was like damn like this girl's already like like thinking like she's moving forward yeah she's like over him. it she's already like break, breaking up with him in her mind <clears throat> um, and like taking they yeah, haven't so, had a scene together in like weeks like we haven't seen Varchi well, together in so long and that's what I mean. I just feel like their whole storyline is fizzling anyway. Maybe they're just trying to get, like, Varchi shippers used to the fact that they're not going to be together and, yeah. like, not having them, like, well, in love in your face all the time. Yeah, and I think, like, to understand that their journeys are going to go separate ways because they are different people, especially at this point in their lives, yeah. right? Yeah, they're very different people. So then it cut. Oh, so they're still talking, and she starts talking about her relationship, the fact that she's, like, with the sexy model and things are going great. And uh, then they start talking about her mom and the fact that her mom is really sick and uh, like Katie Keene starts breaking down and it's really, really, it's a really sweet moment between the two of them. It is. And, you know, Ver- Veronica's like, don't worry, like I got you, girl, you're my friend. And like, you know, you should, you should just But when she said, when Katie need. said this, did you, when Katie mentioned that her mom was sick, did you expect anything uh, from Veronica's side from this? Because I was like, oh no, God. No. If they're mentioning this, no, it's such a random tidbit of information. Like, if they're mentioning it here, I bet you something's going to come back to, like, Veronica, you know? I do feel like it. I, I didn't catch that because I just assumed that the reason why they brought it up was because they wanted you to get kind of, like, ready for what Katie Keene's going to be about. Yeah. But, yeah, you're right. I don't know. Like, maybe, like, it, I mean, it does make sense because that's literally what happens exactly. later. So, yeah. anyway, cutting to Frank and Archie talking. And basically, Frank is like, well, I got to go, too, because, you know, if they're, uh, you know, coming after me, then I don't want to be around. And it just like this is not going to end with Ted and whatever. He's just worried about everything. And he's also worried, I think, about the fact that the like, you know, this could all come back on him as well. Right. So he's like, I got to like go leave Riverdale to keep you guys safe. Like Archie's face um, was as confused as we were. Cause Archie yeah. was basically He's like, like wait, why did you come back into my life? And if you're just going to leave again, like what, what's your yeah. storyline? I don't understand. <laughs> that yeah. was like what we were <laughs> thinking. In yeah, our heads. <laughs> literally. Um, anyway, so then it cuts to Cheryl and Tony and then they're talking in bed. And this is when Cheryl kind of confesses to her the whole story about Nick and how she, he, uh, tried to take advantage of her. Shout out to the Pussycats and hey, Josie. They actually get mentioned <laughs> three years later. Cool. 
I was <laughs> surprised that they even mentioned them, Seriously. to be completely honest. I was like, if she cuts out the fact Seriously. that Veronica and Josie and the Pussycats helped her, <laughs> then I'm going to lose my mind. Um, no, but she does say that. And then Tony's like, oh, that's so sad. That's so fucked up. I have an idea of like what to do to like get back at him. Um, uh, then it cuts to part two of the duel. And this is like the fist fight. And they have like a little quick brawl where like Brett takes like one jab at him. But then basically Jughead knocks him out in like five seconds. So he yeah. wins that round. Then it cuts to Ted and he's on the floor in jail and he's like pretending obviously but the stupid fucking sheriff's like oh no what's happening in here so he opens the gate and sure enough um ted like opens his eyes as the thing is opening up and i'm like okay of course he's gonna go to get out of jail like what the fuck anyway whatever so then it cuts to uh jughead walking around school and everybody's giving him like dirty looks they're like ew ew L. They're just like bumping into yeah. him. They're just kind of being mean to him. And uh, he goes to his room and he sees a snake like pinned to his wall, like a like, dead snake literally, in guys, the shape like of an ass. A ass. rattlesnake. Like it wasn't like, even like a guys. fucking like garden snake. It was like a legit rattlesnake. Like who has like, time? Snake. These people have so <laughs> much time. <laughs> who has time for this shit, man? Like, it's so I true. Can't. <laughs> Yeah, so then he goes and talks to Donna, and he's like, what the hell's going on in this school? Like, is everybody that pissed off about this situation? And Donna's like, don't worry, you got me. And I was like, great. She's like the worst person to be with. Um, So then it cuts to Alice and Betty, and they're just talking. They're kind of just, like, mulling things over. And Betty's like, well, what if these secret tapes are in the secret, like, Quill and Skull room that they're in, like, that they host, like, the meetings in? We can break into there while they're doing, like, the last task, like, the last um, challenge. And Alice is like, sick, let's do that. <laughs> so <laughs> then it cuts to Archie, and he just, like, took a piss. So he's, like, washing his hands in the bathroom at school. And um, he gets a phone call, and it's FP being like, don't freak out. <laughs> but what <laughs> happened was we were in jail and now he isn't in jail anymore. <laughs> like FP like, needs to be so fucking fired. Like I can't. Like he's the worst. <laughs> he's not running do, that like, shit properly. I don't like I know that we have to be like, okay, it's whatever, it's Riverdale. Like, don't take it so seriously. But how did this motherfucker leave an entire fucking sheriff's office? Like, like it's not just like, you getting out of the cell. Like, you gotta get out of the actual yeah. like fucking walls of <laughs> the police building. Like, it's not that easy. <laughs> like, what are you fucking Ted Bundy? So like in the seventies? Like the fuck everything is, is so happening? predictable. Like Yeah. So right right away he's like just keep an eye out like keep a lookout he's like he's out there but we'll take we'll take care of it just be okay and then right as soon as he hangs up of course Ted like launches himself at Archie smashes his head against the mirror fucking smashes him Guys, into the this fucking sink fight sequence was like I literally I was like what insane. is happening <laughs> insane. right now like the fucking fountain is blowing up the cement <laughs> off the wall is breaking off the mirror the toilet the guy got his face shoved in like a shit stained toilet like <laughs> I'm like what is going on like what the hell like this is so extra so insane it's so insane like, guys like the like, wasn't weird. even this extra like like he got his ass fucking handed like when i say handed i mean like literally on a silver platter like on he the toilet so... paper like what the fuck yeah. like it was so extra like fine like one punch two punch okay smack him done guys it went on for like five minutes like a five minute fucking fight sequence and, and on top of that, like, it doesn't even things end are like there. breaking. Yeah, it doesn't even end there, and no one's noticing that you're telling me. Like no one can hear that this is happening in the freaking yeah. bathroom. <laughs> Where's Mr. Honey now? Yeah, huh? like where the fuck is yeah. this guy now? So he, uh, <laughs> the way that this ends is even stupider. Oh my somehow. god, I can't. So like, he's about to get like choked out, and um, he like pulls this pipe out of the wall and then like water sprays out out at ted and then he shoves something in his shoulder and then right in that moment um kevin opens a door from to the bathroom yeah. he's like what's going on up in here and that's when archie takes the second to like hit him over the head with like the top part of the toilet like basically 
and then they run out. They're like, run! Yeah. I'm like, first oh, it's not and over foremost, yet. <laughs> like, but first and foremost, why would you run from someone that you just knocked out? Why can you not just and keep go, him knocked out? Yeah, and go call the cops like you should have been like, doing. Or like don't call the cops, call the FBI, because the FBI can't do pulled, shit. <laughs> like, literally anything. You could have done anything. Anyway, it's, and it's like, uh, yeah, like, pull the during, fire like, alarm. Reg- like it, and it's during school hours. Like there's kids still like in the yeah. office. Like they're walking around the hallways. So anyway, they're walking down the hallway. This guy looks like he just got like his fucking ass handed to him. Kevin's like, "This is crazy." And then, and then right away, Ted is like walking, running down the hallway after them, like a fucking ass- crazy ass assassin. And then he like chucks, like he throws Kevin, like he w- he's like a piece of paper. He's just like boop. He's just like he just literally is like go move. <laughs> I, just I think there's like even a second where he like looks at him and he's like move. <laughs> I don't under, like I don't get it. So like, he's how is so this fight he like still going <laughs> on. <laughs> you he know, pushes it's this funny, motherfucker like, out of the way. If I was on set that day, I would have been like, guys, I think this fight scene should just end in the bathroom. Like, let's not like <laughs> let's not put it into the hallway. Let's not keep going. Like, what the yeah. fuck? why what what, so what, like, what was the reason it's so extra and like the amount of pain that archie was going through i'm like it's not even his fight it's like his uncle's fight like yeah and why can't he just like get him killed like why can't he just like slit his throat and yeah, be done with it yeah. like why does he have to like beat him up so hard <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um he pushes kevin over and then he like throws Archie into a fucking like cupboard or something. He's about to like choke him out. And uh Frank in that same moment like hits him over the head and knocks him so out. So no one and else. Like, I didn't. No student. It's nobody. No teacher. No principal. No Mr. Honey. Nobody else. Fucking Uncle Uncle Frank has to come to the school, fi- find his nephew, and then like basically murder this guy. Like fuck. Cool. Uh, whatever. Cool. So he knocks him out. Frank's back in town for like another five seconds. Then it cuts to mid the Maple Club, and Tony um calls Nick into like a private room. She's like, "Ooh, I got an idea. Like, let's go over here." And uh, she puts him on the bed, and she's like, "Just wait. Oh, I'm gonna just get comfortable, and I'll be right back." They don't show anything past that because it just cuts to like the next morning. No. But. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but that's the exact same room. Yeah. At least the same yeah. set. I know it's not the five seasons, sure it but is. it's the exact same set. Um, so I, For I'm sure, sure they it was use just the like same bed. They yeah. use the same like bed frame and stuff. Yeah. That Cheryl like had uh, got. Or they thing or they had. just didn't have another bed frame, so they used it from like the department, like the set department. I definitely feel like they just wanted to like shout out to be like for those who were watching since season one, <laughs> like here's here's a little Easter egg for you. Um. So then it cuts to Betty and Jughead talking, and uh, she just, like, wanted to double check. She's like, just making sure that you guys are having, like, that next duel. And Jughead's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, so, like, where's that, like, secret room? Wink, wink. And then he's like, okay, well, I can tell you, but, like, whatever. Um, Cuts to the duel, and uh, Jughead and him are kind of talking. Right beforehand, Brett's like, if you... He's like, why don't we make a deal? If you lose, then you have to, like, give me the, like, I get to be the new writer of the Baxter Boys. And Jughead's like, no, fuck you. He's like, I'm a better writer. I'm a better competitor. And I'm a better man. Go fuck yourself. Like, basically, he just, like, went in on him. So they go and sit down. They do this chess game. And I was like, damn, that was, like, an intense, like, standoff for a fucking chess game. They're both sitting there, like, yeah. bop, 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 bop. So while that's happening, while the chess game is happening, Betty and Alice break into the secret like area um, and she finds all these tapes in like the wall. Yeah. And as she's finding the tapes, it cuts to the chess game and like they're playing. But then an alarm goes off and that's when um, he like runs away. He's like. He's like, Mr. DuPont, someone broke into the secret area. I set an alarm and someone's in there right now. And so as Betty finds these tapes, she finds Donna's tape and then she finds her tape or I guess Forsyth's tape. Like it says Forsyth on it. Um, So a Jughead's tape. And she's like putting them in her bag and she's about to leave. And then she sees Brett and they come down and they're like, you're on private property. Give me those tapes back. So she gives 
the Forsyth tape back, but she'd be keeping the other one that she kept in her bag. Hey. Um, and then they just continue uh, the fight, right? Yeah, and then he's like, okay, let's like, go back to the chess game. I'm like, uh, He's like, all right, back to chess. Right. I was like, oh, okay. But the one thing that kind of annoyed me was the timing of all of this. The fact that, like, she couldn't just get out. Yeah, but, whatever. but it, was, like, it was a cool they, sequence. I was like, is she going to get yeah. out? Is she going to get out? And then she couldn't get out, so. She didn't, she didn't get out. <laughs> um, then it cuts to the Andrews residence. And there's a phone call from FP. And basically it says, like, yeah, the feds have taken Ted away. And now they're looking for Frank as well. Yeah. Just, like, as an FYI. Yeah. And this is when Archie's like, you know what? I think the better idea is for you to, like, go and turn yourself in. And maybe they'll give you a lesser charge. Um, you can, like, explain them to uh, explain everything to them. And Frank's like, you know what? You're so much like your dad. I'm going to do it, okay? Like, he probably uses that line seven times in one episode. Like, you're so much like your dad. I know. You're I so was, much I like was, your dad. I know. He's you're like, so much he's like, like every dad. moment, he's like, <laughs> every moment, he's like, <laughs> Like, Archie's, like, putting on his shirt. He's, like, naked. He's, like, you look just like your dad. Oh, your arms are just like your dad. <laughs> you're, like, everything he says is, like, you're like your dad. Like, okay, bro, we get it. Like, it's his son. Of course he's going to be like his dad. Like, fuck. So, uh, whatever. So then he's, like, okay, don't worry about it. We'll, like, we'll I was honestly, like, I was getting our, used to, in. like, having, f- I was used to having Frank there. And I kind of wanted Frank to stay um but the fact that he does end up leaving and like justifies his his leaving is like i can't stay like they're gonna come after me too i was like bro what was this storyline for that's what i'm saying why did you even come to town only to leave like a week later like it makes no sense you didn't teach archie anything like all you did was tell him how much he's like his dad which he already knew (laughs) do you think that maybe he got like kidnapped oh frank yeah. No, I, I just feel like this story is so stupid. I was down to have <laughs> Frank there. Like, I was down to have Frank as, like, a full-time, like, cast member, yeah, uh, like, as a me father too. figure. Like, oh, fine, I'll buy it, whatever. But to have this weird, like, storyline where, like, now he's got to leave anyways, what was the whole point of this in Archie's journey? Like, I don't understand it at all. Yeah, it just You just wasted time. Like, that's it. Bum me out. I was a little cheesed about the fact that it ended this way. Um, but anyway, there's a last, there's a final scene, not with Uncle Frank, but w- about Uncle Frank. So we'll get to that later. Um, another random storyline that I really want to talk about. Um, it cuts to the lodge residents, and they're back in New. Uh, I guess they're back in Riverdale, and Hermione is talking to Veronica, and she's like, "I just seen it break down some of this tea. We weren't in New York for a business trip. We were going to see a doctor. The doctor says that your dad has." a neuromuscular disorder that's starting to degenerate. It sounds like the symptoms sound a lot like MS, but like I'm, it's not MS. Like it, it's like something that I guess can be cured. Like they're not really sure. Maybe they can't say that it's MS. You know what I mean? Like maybe they're not allowed to call something what it is. Like even when Katie Keene said that her mom was sick, like she didn't say what it was. She just said that like she's sick. So maybe, yeah, maybe it's just like their way of like not being so real. And like so actually, specific, yeah, yeah, so specific. Right. And I think even, I think also with MS, people who are living with it are like going to be annoyed if Hiram like yeah. has a full recovery. That's the thing. You like, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it just draws more attention to the people who are suffering yeah. from it like in real life. Exactly. So I think that was the main reason why. And also, <clears throat> we don't even know if this is real. So it can go two ways, right? Like we, it can go like he's faking this, <clears throat> this illness that sounds like ms but they won't call it ms or um it, like he gets better from it and everybody who has ms is gonna be like well that's not how this shit works you know can we talk so about this here I've, yeah let's talk about it so i think that he is sick i i do believe him and i yeah. think that i think i was always waiting for this transitional point where like Hiram does become a little bit better he does try to become good and him and veronica have a good relationship but I, what I didn't want was for him to get sick for that to happen. And I knew they were going to do that. I knew that they were going to use him being weak and him having something that, like, woke her up and was like, dude, it's my dad. Like, I got to take care of him now. I wanted that to happen right. organically and happen, like, because they actually did want to be father and daughter normally. Not just because, like, he might die or he might be suffering in a couple of years. 
you know? Right. But I do think that him having this disorder, maybe, like, logistically, it might work for the show. Maybe they'll, like, phase his character out or he'll just have, like, less scenes in the coming seasons. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, uh, I was concerned that it was going to be a fake storyline because, like, I wouldn't put put it past Hiram to do something like this. Um, I would be really cheesed if that was the situation. So I don't know if they're going to do that with his character. The one thing that did kind of throw me off is why didn't they just let him do it and have a really great moment with yeah. his daughter? Yeah, oh my God, that would have um, been so good. And I wonder if they're going to save that for like a later like season, Maybe. closer to the season finale like, Cause you know, moment. Because, you know, Hiram is like that dad. He doesn't want to admit weakness. He doesn't want to be vulnerable. Yeah. So like I can definitely see how like he wouldn't naturally go and tell his daughter this first. Like the mom would probably tell Veronica first. But yeah, that's, exactly. that's a good point. Like I think that scene will be huge for for sure. Their relationship. And I also think that in the context of this episode where we see, you know, Cheryl talking about her abuse, um, her like assault, uh, Tony talking about her assault, like there's like these really big like Katie Keene talking about her mother being sick. Like there are these really big real life um, moments that they put in this episode where I think that they can't make his up. You know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. there's these really like huge moments that we all go through in life. And I think him lying in this moment would take away from their stories, too, and be like, wait, who's lying now? Who's telling the truth? Like, how real is this? So I think also right. for that, like, I think I believed it more just because I'm like, whoa, like this episode is like talking about like real shit, you know? So it made me believe it more. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I am sad to think that maybe like his character, his character could even die off if yeah, we I mean, yeah. uh, do a flash forward, you know? Yeah. Like, it it is very possible that that by the like if they do a flash forward for season five that they'll say like oh yeah like Hiram yeah. died because look you know? if you think about this show in the coming years like it can't just be all about the parents anymore like I feel like the parents yeah. we've we've passed the point where the parents have a big role in this show and that's kind of sad to right. me you know just because now it's gonna sure. be about the kids and them being adults and them being like in different parts of the world and. I think it's going to become a bigger show because of that. So I don't think they're even going to have time to talk about the parents as much, you know? Yeah, it, it does suck. It is sad that, like, you know, like, everybody was so excited about Phallus. Phallus had, like, f four seconds before yeah. it fizzled. Yeah. And now we're, like, we don't really care about it anymore. And, like, it's true. Like, it, this show is about the kids. They're really focusing on the kids for the final year. I think and they, I feel like, yeah, you're right. They're going to phase out the parents. Yeah, I think they wasted too much time in season three. I think they wasted time on the dumbest shit that yeah. now we're at the end of their high school journey and they are starting to build a foundation for the next coming seasons um and but i feel like we've missed a couple of things along the way because we wasted so much time last season on crazy shit that they yeah. could have used for like you know just building out the parents more and whatever right yeah um anyway let's move forward there's a few more scenes that we have to get through so the next scene is Nick and Tony and Kevin and Fangs the next morning, I guess. And Nick wakes up and there's like feathers everywhere on the bed and he doesn't remember what happened. And Tony comes in and she's like, oh, hey, honey, like, did you have a good night last night? Like, here's your here's a little video to remind you what you did. And then it's like tickle porn. Basically, they made tickle porn. So, um, yeah. So then Tony uh yells at him and she's like you don't know me but i know you and you abuse my girlfriend cheryl blossom like now you know who she is but anyway um she's like i will destroy you if you ever you know like touch her again whatever whatever um so this is hit her holding something over his head so what did you but think about this all can i ask you that like honestly what did you think about this whole revenge plot okay so I just think that it was a very weird way to connect her storyline yeah. to Kevin's storyline. Yeah. Like, I just think that um, it, it makes sense in the sense that, like, of course, you would have put them both together to have this, like, big storyline together. Because neither storylines really have anything to do with anything. Yeah. A lot of our fans were talking about the fact that this storyline should have happened two seasons well, ago. Well, it did. You know, like, and that's the thing. Revenge like, thing. Like, I saw a tweet from someone and they were like, bro, like, 
she did get revenge on Nick. Like the pussy cats and Veronica beat the shit out of him. Like physically, like they beat the shit out of oh, him. Oh yeah, true. Like they did get re- like she I did forgot. get her revenge on him like years ago. I forgot so about for that. So for that to come back, and I get that like trauma, like it comes back and it lives, you know, with you. But we've done that story with the him specifically, yeah, why br- like with him, why we've bring done him- it, like. Yeah. Why do you have to do it and again? Why to bring him? him back? Yeah, it just made no sense to me. And like, it's true. It was so empty, so empty. It was just so obvious that it was a filler. And I would have much appreciated more of like Tony's story because she does kind of get into her her story a little bit. And she says similar, like this happened to me years earlier too. But then that's it. We don't right. we don't get any more of that. Yeah. And that's nothing. It. Nothing else. Like, I would have like give me and... more of that at least because I already know this how this Cheryl storyline turns out. They. They prank him. They prank Nick again. He runs away scared out of town. Like we've seen this the happen. End. Like yeah. so many, like, you know, so I just, I, I not, didn't like it. And it is. <laughs> yeah. To your point now that you mentioned that he got his ass kicked last time. Um, why would he come back to a fucking town? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Does it make fucking sense, man? Like the house. Like who wrote literally this shit? To get his ass like who? Who in the writers' room was like, "Yo, we're gonna get Nick Saint Clair back. He's gonna come to like throw a party for his boys, and he's gonna get his ass kicked again." Like why? Uh, like you know, why? you know what it is. They honestly, they honestly think that they they think or they assume that the viewers of the show are like idiots, like who will, will like, never remember the the story plots at all. Like, are you trying to erase? You expect- are you trying to erase the pussycats from my brain? Like, dude, I will yeah, always remember that moment. You? Like, how dare you? <laughs> they fucking kick the shit out of that guy. Do not take that moment away from them. Like, <laughs> you know? I fucking agree. Preach, girl. Fuck, it's man. so true. Like, he already got uh, his revenge. He already got his thing. Like, you guys literally physically yeah. abused the kid. <laughs> Couldn't he not walk at the end of it all? Yeah. Or <laughs> like he, <laughs> there was that whole storyline where he had a cane, yeah. no? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> totally forgot about that whole thing. So this scene doesn't even get any better. Um, they all end up like the with the final scene is them all sitting in bed watching this tickle porn and watching this video. Um, and Kevin's like, he's what we call in the tickle business a squealer. And I'm like, why are we normalizing tickling yeah. as a fucking why is he doing this why is he doing this yeah, I know. why I know. is he doing this question mark like i don't know what else to say you guys if you didn't hear my rant last last episode i'm not going to get into it again because <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous but i'm just really upset and annoyed about this storyline specifically for kevin so uh, moving on Archie and FP, uh, they're talking, uh, and this is, like, way after, like, Archie gets out of the shower, and he realizes that Frank has disappeared, and um, he goes downstairs, and FP's, like, hanging out, or, or whatever, and he's like, he didn't even say goodbye to me, like, he just left this, like, random metal in my room, and FP literally, like, literally, it seems like every character in Archie's life is like, so, um, what are you gonna do next after... <laughs> This crazy storyline, now that this crazy storyline is closed, um, which one are you going to do now? And Archie's like, I don't know. I was just going to, like, live. And he's like, no, like, what are you going to do next? Like, we need to know what your storyline is going to be because <laughs> this is the final, like, this is season four. And we don't know what's gonna, what we need to do with our main fucking no, character. This is not what How do you not know? Like, we, we are out of ideas for you, KJ. We have no fucking idea what to do anymore. Yeah. We've recycled the superhero vigilante storyline two times now. Yeah. <laughs> you fought a bear. You fought a mercenary trying to kill your uncle that came back from, like, God knows, from a crab boat. Your father's dead. We Your mom's never <laughs> here. We don't know what to do with you anymore, bro. Like, you beat up the in. fuck, uh, like your your girlfriend's dad in a boxing yeah, match. Yeah. Like, what, did he, <laughs> what has he not done? He's literally done like, everything. Just let this kid play football. Live. Fuck his girlfriend. <laughs> like go to school. Like let him not like have a normal, non-violent senior year. Like why? Why are you guys putting him through this crazy yeah. shit? And this is the thing. It's really funny because we've had a few moments like this this season where he has these conversations where he's like, what's next for you? What do you want for your future? And it does always end up with him being like, I don't know. We'll see. And it's a really big 
I feel miss on their part for this character who's supposed to have more of like a driving factor in him to like push it forward. Well, like if you're thinking, I, I don't know. Here's the thing. And, and yeah, you make a really good point. I did love that ending with him and FP and what, what, what Archie does say to him. What is said about yeah. you know, my father was a simple man. My father went to sleep like peacefully and whatever, whatever. And maybe that's going to be my uh, life as well. But, Okay. Yeah. So you got to that realization by what? Uh, fighting this fucking guy in your high school bathroom and yeah. having a boxing <laughs> gym. Like, like to get to that realization, why did you have to go through all these different things? And of course, I'm not blaming Archie. It's the the path that they've written for line. him. But like, yeah. I don't get the connection of that. Like, like wouldn't it just been easier if like his girlfriend wanted all these things and wanted to move out of Riverdale? And then he said, no, I want to stay in town where my dad yeah. formed his life or whatever. Like instead, it's like this crazy next level violent storyline only to get him to the realization that like, yeah, maybe I just want like a simple life in Riverdale. Uh, OK. And I think like, I, <laughs> and I think it's really it's really hard because they tried to give Archie his own storyline separate from the rest of the core four this entire season. So bringing him back into the fold now is going to always feel a little out of place. Like I wish almost that he was because he's kind of the main character, like comic book wise and like, I guess Riverdale wise, he's like the central, like of the four, core four, like, it would have been nice if they made his character more like, oh, what's Shoni up to? Let me, like, go yeah, visit them. Exactly. Or, like, what's what's my girl Veronica doing? Oh, I'll go to New York with her yeah. this episode. Like, why not? Like, he could be slotted into every fucking exactly. story. Instead, they make him this character who's, like, trying to find himself by getting his ass handed to him every episode or running a gym by himself. Like, it doesn't, none of this makes any sense well, yeah, to me. It, I just don't get why it always has to be a physical thing. You know what I mean? Like, right. why? Just why? Why that? Why can't you guys just switch it up? Why can't it be different? And and that's and what is his mo? Like, what is his motivation? You're like, you're right. They've had these conversations already about him coming to this realization, but then they still give him these crazy yeah. storylines. Yeah. So it's like he keep he keeps saying. Yes, I want to be a good person. Yes, I'm going to be a good person. Oh, I'm going to go to therapy and I'm going to be a good person. Yeah. I'm going to be a good person because of my dad. Like every episode or every time these story arcs end with him, it's like the same ending. And then we get an even crazier story. Like what's going to happen next? Like a fucking bomb's going to like, I don't yeah, know I what, just, I, I what don't, more they can give him. I don't understand why they made their lives harder. Like they as writers are making yeah. their lives harder by having all these crazy things happen to him. When it doesn't it's have true. to be like that, you're right. The other side of the show could have been going fast paced and he could have just been that filler Archie friend that we've known him to be in the comic books. And I think I think it would have yeah. worked like that regardless. And I don't know. It's For just sure. it's just very extra. Very, very extra. So okay, let's get to the end. Um cuts to the lodge residence and she goes to her parents. Veronica goes to her parents, she's just like, Good morning, parents. Um, so just letting you know, it's not a fish, a fish, but I am going to go to New York for school. So, um, and then it looks like, you know, her and, uh, Hiram have made amends. They like make eyes at each other and everything seems to be like good with the world yeah. of, uh, daddy and Veronica. And she says that she's using her lodge name. So that was cute. Yeah, I, I did like that too. But are you okay with it resolving this way? I guess we talked about this already. But, like, are you okay with it resolving this way? I mean, are we, at this are we point, I don't have this? a choice. Like, I have to be okay with it. And I am yeah. ready for them to have a better relationship. But like I said before, I really would have liked to see them organically come together and come to Agreed. that realization. And not have him be sick for her to realize, like, damn, that's my dad. Like, why? Like, like so many opportunities yeah. this uh, season to to bring that forward yeah. for her. Like they could have made amends and she still could have had this maple business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like, like they could have come together to be happened. like, let's work together to make our best like recipe yeah. done. Instead, this guy has to like done. get sick for her to be like, I'm going to be a lodge again. Like, like even the sister storyline like watched out so quickly. Like where, yeah, what happened to Hermosa? Just, yeah. <laughs> Where's Hermosa? Um, justice for Hermosa. But... I will say the fact that she solidifies the fact that she's going to New York for school. Yeah. Um, my theory is Barchi will rise in a flash forward. That's I, a big statement. I'm saying that Jayla. big statement, big confidence you be wearing, on this one. You better be wearing a, a bulletproof vest the next week because they're going to come for I'm you. I'm also, 
I'm going to be wearing those, uh, you know, those spoons on my eyes because I'm going to be blocking out all the haters. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I I'm going to confidently say that Barchi will rise in a flash forward if they yeah. do decide to do this. Yeah. Oh, They're angling so everything. So yeah. Like I didn't get to talk to you about it personally on the podcast about the fact that that flash forward last episode shows Archie and Betty getting together a little bit. If Veronica goes to school, we are like guys ninety nine percent. The only there. comment I sent Jaylag like after I watched the episode, I was like, "Did you smell that Barchi seed?" And he was like, "Yes." I was like, "Done." <laughs> like that's <laughs> like all she we had didn't to say, say anything. Like didn't talk about the tickle porn. Didn't talk about anything. It was literally that one like, annoying scene that she wanted to talk the about. Barchi moment. <laughs> That's my MB. Um, so, uh, do you think I'm right? Are you like no, for sure. I on think, that tip as and, well? And I don't think, honestly, guys, it's not about, oh, it's going to be Varchi now. Oh, Varchi's breaking up. I think they're doing it very naturally. I think like this, what's what we're going to see, maybe we don't know if we're going to see it for sure, but... I think it's I think it's understandable. Like Veronica's gonna move away or she's gonna start focusing her attention on New York and on her college, you know, starting in the fall. And I think just naturally, like maybe Archie and Betty working to for this whole jughead storyline, like it may it's gonna push them closer together. And we all know what happens when Betty and Archie work on a case together. You have that one uh, yeah. five second scene from like season two in that Christmas <laughs> episode when they're in the car. Yeah, be still talking and, about like, they kiss. Uh, like do not forget that moment because I did not. <laughs> that we that's what know. happens when <laughs> they work together. That's, that's the scene. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really interested to see like if that I mean, is going to be. We're four the case. seasons in, guys. We're four seasons yeah, in. It's time. It's it's an iconic relationship. I think they have to explore it a little bit. You know, they're not. They may not be and end also, game, like, but like just to explore it a little bit more. Yeah, and I feel like if they do do a f- flashback for season five, you'll be able to explore the reasons why for they sure, broke up and if they're sure. going to get back together. Like all of that dynamic will be so re-energized yeah. if they do it that way. Yeah. So anyway, I'm I'm really like I'm pitching this to the writers right now. I'll be a little disappointed at this point if you guys don't do a flash forward. Yeah. Um. So the final scene that we get is uh, Jughead and Betty talking, and she Betty says like I did find a tape that I did steal, and it's Donna's tape. Play they play Donna's tape, but it's not a sex tape at all. Uh, it shows Donna talking during confessional, and she talks about a guy abusing her. Um, But instead of chipping, it's some next guy's name. So she realizes that uh, watching this tape that it's like a basically like a rehearsed script that she's been saying over and over again and just inserting a different person's name in. So the whole episode ends with her coming kind of telling Jughead like we should be watching out for Donna as well. She could be the one that's kind of the mastermind behind all of this. Um, And maybe it isn't Brett. Maybe it is Donna. Um, yeah, that's how the episode ends. I mean, I am intrigued by that. Yeah. I think we kind of called it from the very beginning, sure. so I'm not really shocked. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I just, I do. How are you feeling about this whole murder mystery I mean, storyline? Are, it. We, are we tired of it? I, I do yeah. think it's the strongest, strongest point of the season, and I do enjoy it. Um, okay, I'm not mad at it, and I, I kind of just want to see how it's all going to unfold, you know. But they still have like a long way to go. We're only kind of in the mid- halfway point of the season, so, um, like, like, are they gonna drag this out till the end? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I <clears throat> I'll be interested to see if they like go maybe like the third or fourth episode because it happens at spring break. So yeah, yeah I don't oh, know. Yeah, we'll true. See. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the end of the episode. Uh, I know we're a little bit over time, but dash okay because you guys love us. We're going to get into some questions from our listeners yeah. or, or sorry, comments from our listeners before we get into our recap roundups. Yeah. So let's do that now. You want to do the yeah, first one? Yeah, we got some good feedback from you guys last night and I think we were all on the same page. Um, at Hunter James on Twitter wrote, I don't know. Some of the things I really like with this episode were all the grounded emotional moments some characters had, Cheryl, and then the revelation of Hiram's illness. And then also the little guest role of Katie Keene surprisingly was super cute and had my attention. LOL. And then, nice. yeah. yeah, it's true. Like there were some really great, like emotional, real moments of the episode. Um, it was just mixed in with a lot of like randomness too. So, um, yeah, it's hard to appreciate it sometimes. You know what I mean? 
For for sure. I mean, like if they just had a consistency and how the tone is set for Riverdale, then I think we'd be all down. Yeah, but I it's did. Just you don't know how to feel sometimes. I did love this next comment, and I totally agreed with um, at Shoney Five on it. Didn't love Tony. <laughs> nice. Didn't love Tony drugging Nick and having Kevin and Fangs assault him in order to teach him a lesson about not assaulting people. Like it's true. Like how do you? Yeah, you how are you teaching kids to learn. this lesson that like oh assault yeah. him to teach him a lesson about assaulting? Like yeah, it's true. It's very true. That's a very good point. Yeah. Also, didn't love the cumulative effect of Brett maybe secretly taping people being good and then donna maybe lying about assault though we don't have all the info so good point yeah so, good like point. you guys had some really really good comments yesterday it's a very good point um so yeah before we get into your recap roundups let's do ours first recap roundups best, best moment, moment. What was your best moment? Um, best moment. It was really hard, guys. I was struggling. Um, so I think I got to just give it to Katie Keene and the NYC teams. Because <laughs> literally, that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm going to give mine to uh, Jughead letting Brett win at the very end uh, with the ch ch chess match. Sorry. Um, I don't think we even talked about that in our <laughs> rundown. True. But... Um, he does let Brett win and he's like, fuck this, fuck you guys, I'm out, I'm gonna go like bang my girlfriend now. Yeah. Um I do I do love it only because I've been waiting for him to finally for sure, turn. For sure. And now that it's happened, I'm like, oh fucking finally. Yeah. Um, we can move forward. But I was kind of over the fact that he it took him this long, a fucking duel of three different battles for him yeah. to finally be like, Okay, i I have to leave the school or I have to get out of here. Agreed. WTF, WTF moment. moment. What was your WTF moment? WTF moment, I think, is the entire episode. Uh, I think <laughs> <laughs> I was confused the whole fucking time because I was like, I don't understand what's happening. But specifically, uh, Nick St. Clair coming into town to throw a party. I was like, what? Like, oh, yeah. did you Crazy. guys just have this like in a in a like an envelope from season like one? And you're like, oh, let's reuse this little storyline here. Like, bring it back. <laughs> like it made. I don't know. I just uh, I hated that like, connection. I, I Honestly, ever since you just reminded me about the fact that they, she already got yes. his ass kicked, I, I like literally can't get it out of my head now because I'm like, they literally did not have to do any of this. That's what I mean. Any of That's this. what I any mean. This. Like, this story was done. It, had an, it had an ending. They got their revenge. <laughs> Cheryl felt better. Like, it was done. So, yeah. for this to come back, like, and, you know, if maybe they had, like, sort of, um, reminded us about this traumatic event in Cheryl's life, like throughout season three and stuff. Okay, maybe I could have like believed it, but she had so many more fucked up things happen to her last season that I think trumped yeah. that Nikki St. Clair storyline. So if anything, they should be working on those things, not like the Nick St. Clair thing that like they, she already got revenge on. It just doesn't make any sense <laughs> to true. me. Like it makes no it sense. It is so true. That's a really good point. Um, yeah. Um, my WTF moment is gonna go to Ted kicking yeah. at Archie's ass like to the like, like fucking smooth. So extreme, and back. yeah. <laughs> like so like, extreme. <laughs> like he broke like seven things in that bathroom yeah. and he just walked out he totally broke, fine. He's like, oh, guys, no. he broke the stalls. Like he pushed Archie through like four <laughs> stall walls. Like <laughs> what? Into a cupboard, broke him, like did a pile driver on a sink. Oh. And this guy's able to w walk around like he could be he would be paralyzed. Be paralyzed. Like, these, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, come on, yeah, guys. Yeah. Like he literally got his ass beat down. And I was just yeah. like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. And also, like, why is Ted going in so hard on a teenage boy? <laughs> like, I know. Bro, chill out. Yeah. Like, you think that he'd at least go after FP because he's an adult. Like, come on. <laughs> Anyway, MVP. MVP. What was your MVP? MVP, I think I'm going to say uh, Betty and Alice. Uh, I think they were nice. so freaking cute together, working together to like solve this case. Um, and I think they found a great way to make Alice's character work. You know, like she doesn't yeah, feel yeah. random. She doesn't feel forced. Them coming together to do this together was really freaking cute. So I like both the both of them. Agreed. I did love this. I think she was really, really fun to watch on screen as well. I'm like, both of them playing together was cool. Um, my MVP is going to go to Archie. And I will give the caveat that I loved Archie in this story because he stayed true to who he was as a character and, like, did really good things in this episode. Um, but I will 
say that it wasn't really what my biggest gripe about this is the storyline they give him and more about like, yeah his character For sure. you know what i mean yeah. like the storyline is a is my lvp and him as a character is my mvp true <laughs> LVP. LVP. Who's your LVP? And my LVP, I'm going to say, are the writers who created the storyline oh. for him. Um, <laughs> and I think just created the whole fucking episode. It yeah. was a mess. It was like it was like pulling yeah. on all these strings that I think they were just grasping at. And I don't understand why. I think if they just followed one storyline or even two of this episode, it would have been fine. But there was like five different things happening. And like it, it just felt so insane to me. And I don't understand why yeah. they did that. So, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, my LVP, I'm going to give it to two people. I'm going to give it to Kevin and Fangs. Fangs for showing us his cute little abs and thinking that he can get away with being a shitty character. Yeah. And Kevin for still being a shitty character. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. That's it. The, <laughs> the best, best line. line. Uh, what was your best line? Best line goes to Archie at the end. It's a long yeah. one. Um, but I, it honestly made me almost cry. So... He says, my dad was a decent, good guy. He worked hard. He loved me. He loved his life. I believe he's up peacefully at night. Some days he won and some days he lost. Usually it was a draw and that was enough for him. He was a simple man with honor. Maybe that's what is next for me. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, that's so cute. I did love this. I love this too. Oh, I like, like had it. I put a note down after. I was like, I did love this it line. Was I, it, so, was like, it was one of my favorite It was lines. really beautiful. And I tried in that moment to understand what everything before this led him to this realization. But I, I still didn't get the connection. Like, yeah. So, but it was really cute. And I really, really love that line. And I'm glad they wrote that in for him. Because that was like one of his best lines, I think, of the entire series, you know? Agreed. Um, my best line is another cute, like, mushy-gushy one. Uh, it's from Veronica saying, What are friends for if not to offer shoulders to cry on? Yeah. And I just think that's a really so cute, cute thing to say to all of your friends. Just hug a friend Katie today, so okay? Cute. Katie Kane. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Katie Kane. Um, we have your round us. So we're going to go through them right now. At Sardonically, she says her MVP is Jughead, Alice, and Betty, and Tony of B. Um, her LVPs, Brett and Donna and Nixon, sicko. <laughs> and her best moment is Tony blackmailing Nick, Jughead throwing the chess match. Um, her WTF moment is Hiram getting sick. And her best line is, this school is insane from Kevin. That line must have really got people. Yeah, I think it was like everyone's best line. <laughs> <laughs> so random. Um... At Postmaster Radio says his best moment was all the scenes between Veronica and Katie, plus Tony's revenge on Nick St. Clair. Um, his WTF moment was either knowing uh, knowing about Hiram's disease, or I guess he's not knowing about Hiram's disease. Uh, his MVP was uh, Betty, Jughead, and Tony. His LVP, Nick St. Clair. And his best line is, this school is insane. Again, by Kevin. Yeah. That's so, so random. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess... Like Apparently it was the a writer cute line. loved his delivery. <laughs> it was a cute line, but it was just funny how like it wasn't even meant for him. Like it wasn't even an actual line in the script. He just yeah. made it up for himself. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shoney Five on it says MVP Tony, LVP the writers, and Archie's storyline. Uh, best line is Kevin saying, uh, "Nick, that Nick is what we called in the tickle business, uh, first class squealer." Squealer, which I thought was kind of fun. cute. Um, and finally, at Gracie Girl one two one, best moment: Tony blackmailing Nick St. Clair. WTF? Frank's friend attacking him out of nowhere. MVP: Tony and the writers for not giving, uh, sorry, for giving not only Tony screen time but Fangs and Kevin time as well. That is an extremely weird. I mean, it, it was, was still so weird. weird. Yeah, <laughs> it was so yeah. weird, girl. Um, and LVP to Nick for existing and Donna for lying. <laughs> that yeah. is it. Thank you guys so Thank much you for guys. your, uh, make sure if you guys don't already, as soon as the episode ends, uh, go to our Twitter at recap underscore rewind and tweet us your best round, uh, uh, roundups for the episode. And we will talk to you. Mention talk them. Through them. Um, yeah, we'll mention them on our podcast. So do it for next week. 
Um, before we end off the episode, I have a few announcements. First, we have our contest going on right now for a chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card and pop socket. To enter, all you need to do is rate and comment on our iTunes page, and you will be entered in the draw. We're extending this contest to the end of Riverdale Season 4, so just keep an eye out for that. I'd like to take this time to thank our patrons of the episode, our Rewinder Squad, White, Nicole, Faith, our Lit Rewinders, Tina Ann, Sarge, Serena, Slay, Kate, and Jessica, and our Mommy Rewinders, Becca, Sarah, Tamala, and Grace. Thanks, guys. And if you would like to join our Patreon family, check us out at patreon.com slash recap underscore rewind. If you join, you'll get access to all things recap, rewind, exclusive contests, content, and updates. And also make sure you guys are checking us out on all of our socials, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. You can also find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iTunes. Like, subscribe, follow, review, and comment to stay engaged with us at Recap Rewind. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.